Hello friends, welcome to Look and Live. You are now here with Pastor James Devalon and this is another Bible study. Bible study made simple. Once again, Touch of Faith Ministry. And we have a good one for you today. And the title of this one is Covered is Righteousness. Friends, I'm going to talk about what does it mean to understand the teaching of righteousness by faith so if i want to be saved right and i want to be a christian i want to be a child of god what are the biblical principles of righteousness by faith friends we have a good one for you today i hope you are ready before we get into this video make sure you like and subscribe to the page click the bell icon for more of our notification of uploads make sure you check out the link below because we have the study guide the pdf format you can download that for your own personal study as always so without further ado how about we pause now and have a word of prayer so we can get into the heart of the message let us pray heavenly father speak to our hearts today help us to understand the value of your word you said in your word that the entrance of thy word gives light. It gives us understanding unto the simple. And I'm so grateful for that. And I pray that you will bless our hearts as we get deep, seeking to understand the content of your word. Even more, help us to have a willing desire to obey and to believe. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, friends, let's now get into the heart of this message. Once again, righteousness by faith. This is one of the most amazing study you're going to have. This is going to encourage and bless your heart. Now, first of all, let's get some names written here. Let's get some names written. As soon as I can get this to work. Okay. I'm on back. There we go. Welcome back. All right. So we are studying lesson number 18, I believe today's lesson is or 19, one of them. Uh, so my name is James Devalon. So the instructor is the Holy Spirit. He's the one who leads us into all truth and whatever date you are watching this video. Let's begin with reading this quotation here. The Bible teaches that justification or saving righteousness come by faith in what Christ, in what Jesus has done on Calvary's cross. It is impossible for men to make himself righteous or for men to save himself. By faith, he must accept the righteousness of Christ on his behalf. And by faith, the sinner is then declared righteous. This is, listen to the next few words, imputed righteousness. Then as for the forgiven sinner continues in a relationship with the Messiah, he or she is given imparted righteousness through the power of the Holy Spirit, enabling him or her to form a character progressively more and more like the saviors. Are you ready for this? Let's begin. Question number one, how do I receive Christ's righteousness? Philippians 3 verses 8 and 9. Let's get into the Bible. Philippians 3 verses 8 and 9. How do I receive Christ's righteousness? Are you ready for this? Let's find out. So Philippians 3. All right. So uh, I'm think I'm sure you're hearing some music. Let me let me turn that music off. All right, let's go. Philippians three verses eight and nine, and the Bible reads, "Yeah, doubtless I count all things lost." Okay, that's correct. I count all things lost, all things but lost, for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Let's let's do it again. Let's do it again. <clears throat> I'm just not used to this new Bible format software that I have going on here. Okay, let's do it again. Yea, doubtless. 
and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus, of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. And be found in him that having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is to the faith of Christ, the righteousness of God by faith. So, according to this passage, the question we ask is, how do I receive Christ's righteousness? We all told we must be found in him, not having my own righteousness. So we don't have our own righteousness. God has uh, the righteousness that we need is something that comes from God. So in essence, listen to the note. If you maintain your own righteousness, you cannot receive Christ's righteousness. It is one or the other. It both. Now, in the world today, right, there are so many theories when it comes to salvation. There are so many theories that... Um, people will speak about uh but there are two main real and honest uh approach when it comes to salvation it is salvation by good works right this is when i choose to be saved by my own effort trusting and believing the life that i have lived is good enough and god will accept me according to how good of a person that i am that's called righteousness by works or salvation by good works that will never be accepted by god i'm going to explain to you something else the second part is righteousness by faith in contrary to that right so the opposite of it is righteousness by faith which teaches that i have no righteousness of my own I can't save myself. There's nothing I can do to be made righteous. But I can choose to believe in the righteousness of God, which is Jesus. I can actually accept and believe what he has done or who he is has my righteousness. Does it make sense? So I accept what God gives me as a gift and I reject all that I can ever produce as an offering to God. We're going to make sense of this as we go through this study, but that is pretty much the foundation of this thing. So remember, there are two major ways of salvation or two main ways. Only one works. The other one is a deception. Now, let's follow. Does my obedience save me? When I obey God, does that save me in itself? Romans 5.19 says, For as by one, man obe for by one man obedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous, so that as sin hath reigned unto death, so even so, even so my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life. By who? By Jesus Christ our Lord. So let's read the text. Let's go to Romans 5.19. We got our Bible open. Romans 5, verse 19. And it reads, I speak after the manner of... I'm sorry. Let's, let's, let's look at that again. Oh, let's look at 19. Let's look at verse 21. And it reads, what fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of all things, I'm sorry, this is, I mean, oh my goodness, I'm in chapter six. I'm so not used to this Bible. I'm so not used to this software. All right. That as sin have reigned unto death, so even so, my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So look at that. So, Jesus is the only means by which we are saved. But get it that there is no amount of obedience that I can render to God to save me. I am saved by the blood of Jesus. You are saved by the blood of Jesus. Obedience is significant, but obedience doesn't make you saved. Obedience maintain you 
in a state of salvation. Obedience keep you on a road of salvation, but obedience itself does not save you. Now you got to keep this in mind. Okay. So let's continue. We're going to make sense of this. I promise you, we're going to get it. Let's go. It is obedience. It is the obedience of Jesus that is credited to you. The repentant sinner, the repentant sinner, uh, that makes you righteous. Now you got this. I don't have an obedience to render to God for my salvation, but what Christ has done is what God offers to me as a gift of salvation. Let's continue. Question number three. When I do all things, God commands me. What does that make me? Okay, Luke 17, verse 10. Likewise, when you have done all these things which are commanded of you and say that we are, the word is unprofitable servants. So the point is, let's look at the text 17, 10. So you can say that I've shown it to you which I'm sure you know by now. I'm not lying to you about these things. Okay, so likewise, you know, after you've done all these things, we shall commend it you. We are unprofitable servants, for we have done that which was our duty to do. So in essence, you obey the Lord because you are supposed to obey the Lord, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so it's almost like uh, if I may say, you go for a job and after you get hired for the job and you expect special treatment because you are doing your job. Well, you were hired to do the job in the first place. I know this is a poor analogy, but the point is this. You don't do the things you do in order to be saved. You do the things you do because you are saved. You do your job not to get hired. You do your job because you are hired. You've been hired. Am I making sense? So in essence, it's kind of like that's what the call to Christianity is all about. You haven't done anything when you do the things you should have done all along. So when a Christian obeys God, he's just doing what he should have done. All alone. Every man should be obedient to God. But unfortunately, we are born with a sinful nature. We've departed from God, right? So when you become a Christian, the only thing that's different is that now you're obeying God by faith, right? You're obeying the Lord as you should have. But since you didn't like you didn't have the strength and the faith and the belief to do it, God is now helping you and working through you to carry it out when you obey the Lord. You are simply telling him, I believe what you say. You are simply telling him, I am a son. You are simply telling him, I am a child of God. I'm a believer. That's all you're simply doing. Or well, you're not doing it in order for you to be saved. You're doing it because you are saved. Amen. So what am I not? What am I not saved by? Titus 3 verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost so there are no works that you can perform as a mean of your salvation um there's nothing you can do to make you good enough for god to accept you as a matter of fact god chooses to love you and to accept you by his grace we're going to get to know what that grace is all about according to the same verse what am i saying by according to the answer is mercy i'm going to find the text for you in the book of titus 3. let's open our bible now just so you know you know i'm not making these things up right because we like the bible to speak so we're going to go to titus titus is it titus 3 or titus 2 titus 2 yeah, Titus 3. So let's look at. Titus 3, uh, look at uh, verse 5. 
and it says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So what is it that God used to save us? His mercy. So there you have it right here. Now, listen to this word. Let's read something to you. This is a quotation coming from a book, uh, it's actually a devotional book called Faith and Works. If you will gather together everything that is good and holy and noble and lovely in a man, in man, and then present the subject to the angels of God as acting at part in the salvation of the human soul or in merit or proposition will be rejected as treason. Did you hear? Let's keep reading. Any works that men can render to God will be far less than nothingness. My requests are made acceptable only because they are laid upon Christ's righteousness. The idea of doing anything to merit the grace of pardon is fallacy. From beginning to end, Lord, in my hand, no price I bring, simply to thy cross. I cling. There you have it here. Face and works, page 24. So what is the point? There is nothing you can do, or there are no good enough works that you can perform. There are no amount of obedience that you can do and present that to God as a mean of salvation. A good story you can look at in the Bible to illustrate this is the story of Cain and Abel. Abel was a man who believed that I can do whatever I want and God will accept it. God says, I want a lamb. I want something bloody. I want a sacrifice, which is a type of Jesus. That's what he wanted from both brothers. Cain brought the fruit of the ground. His own works, his own labor, not the blood of the lamb. God rejected that. But Abel brought the blood of the lamb and God accepted his offering. So what's the difference? There are two types of people in the world. Those who believe that they can bring their fruit or good works to God as a means of salvation. Friends, they're going to be disappointed because God is going to reject that. The other group are those who say, Lord, I cannot save myself. I'm, I'm a wretch. I'm a mess. I don't know how. I don't have the means. I am sorry. I am broken. I am wounded. I am poor, blind, naked. But I come to you by faith. Please save me because of the blood of Jesus. Accept me, my God. That man will be saved. So do you understand? So those who say, I'm going to save myself by my own good works, or those who are those who are saying, I cannot save myself, but I'm going to trust in Jesus. So this is how it's all going to be carried out. Question number six, how does my righteousness appear before the eyes of God? The Bible calls it filthy rags. Let's look at that in Isaiah 64. Let's read from... Let's read it from verse, I believe it's verse 6, Isaiah 64. Look what it says here. We are all as unclean things, verse 6, for all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So in essence, you know what filthy rags is? Do you know what a filthy rags is? Is what is known as monstrous cloth. Okay, today uh, we call this as tampon, right? That's what we use today. But back then, women used to use the rag to for menstruation, right? For that's right. When they have their period, they use they used to use a cloth. So in essence, when I bring my own good works to God as a mean of salvation, is like hanging before the eyes of God. Uh, 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 this is my mask, but think of this mask as a filthy rag full of blood. 
And he said, Lord, here are my good works. Save me. And God says, that's filthy rags. Get that stuff away from me. <laughs> Yo. So that's the idea. So you cannot, by your own good works, save yourself from a life of sin. But you can, by faith, be saved by the blood of the Lamb. So let's go to Jeremiah 23, verse 6, and Romans 10, verse 10, ver 10 verse 4. Who is my, my righteousness? The answer is the Lord, our righteousness. And you can check up on me. For Christ is the end of the law for <clears throat> righteousness to everyone that believe. So I don't have any righteousness of my own. Christ is my righteousness. The Lord is my righteousness. Some people will say, is this saying that the law end because Jesus is the end of the law? No, Jesus is the fullness of the law. That's kind of what he's saying here. Jesus complete the, 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 the perfect obedience to the law of God as a mean of righteousness, as a gift to mankind. That's what the text is saying. He's not saying that Ten Commandments are nailed to the cross. They don't matter anymore, which I've heard many people trying to use this text to do away with the Ten Commandments. I'm like, do you really want to get rid of the Ten Commandments of God? That means murders, bloodshed, and all that crazy stuff will happen. Are you ready for that kind of nonsense? So uh, I don't think so. Grace is defined as unmerited favor. You do not deserve it. Rather, you deserve death because the wages of sin is death. But because of God's grace, mercy, and Christ's death on a cross, you can be forgiven and pardon. Subsequently, you can walk away free from condemnation. The world end is better translated gold. I love that. The gold of God's law is to lead you to the Savior who forgives you and presents you without spot or wrinkle. Isn't that beautiful? So, friends, this is a message that is either misunderstood or not preached about in the Christian church, right? It's called righteousness by faith. And if I want to be made righteous, there is nothing you need to be doing apart from exercising faith in the blood of the Lamb, apart from trusting in Christ. That is your first and most essential step. And once you choose to do that, God then merit you with Christ's righteousness as if it is your very own. That's called righteousness by faith. Lord, I don't have anything to save me, but I believe what Jesus has done was for me and I accept it by faith. Beautiful. That is the gospel. There you have it, friends. In a simple word, there you have it. Can I earn salvation? You should know what the answer is. Being justified. Being justified by. So. The redemption. All right, let's read that. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Romans 3, 24. Can I earn my salvation? Some people think they can earn their way to heaven. And they are sadly mistaken. Sadly mistaken. Being justified freely is the word I was looking for by his grace. So can I earn it? No, it's actually free. God says I'm giving you a gift and you're trying to work for it. Stop. Stop it. Salvation is a free gift of God. You cannot pay for this unspeakable gift. If you could, it will require your life. So you cannot earn it. But it is freely offered and given to you by God. What were the Jews in Paul's day ignorant of and what did it cause them to do? In Romans chapter 10 verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going on to establish their to establish their own righteousness. And so these are words that I I am sure that are correct. So how about we turn to the Bible in the meantime? Oh, I didn't show you the text. So this is the question we answer in here. What were the Jews in Paul's day ignorant of and what did they did it cause them to do? So let's go to Romans 10 verse 3. So these people were trying to establish their own righteousness instead of God's. So instead of doing things God's way, they say, we're just going to do it our own way. We know we're going to save ourselves 
by our own ability. Look what the Bible says about that. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So the Jews in Paul's day believed that they were able to do enough goods to save themselves. So they were ignorant of God's righteousness and they went about establishing their own righteousness. So which one you want, your own or what God has given you as a free gift? Is either or either. Is either one or the other. Many well-intentioned individuals are trying to establish their own righteousness, even today. They are trying to be saved by eating certain food, wearing particular clothes, returning more than a faithful tie, preaching to people, etc., etc., etc. Friends, I hope you are listening to the message today that salvation is a free gift. and You cannot earn it. You don't deserve it. There is nothing you can do to get there. But if you will reach out with the hands of faith, it is yours. What two things will happen if I attempt to, to attain righteousness by my, by my works? Romans 9, verse 31 and 32. So what will happen if I try to do that? Romans 9, verses 31 and 32. How about we stand there right now? Romans 9. All right, so let's go to Romans 9, 31, there it is, and 32. It reads, but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, have not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it was, as it were, by the works of the law, for they stem, for they stumbled at the stumbling block. There you have it. So what is it that they were trying to do? They were trying to attain righteousness. They were trying to attain righteousness by their own good works. So what has the Bible says? They have not attained it. So even in the days of the apostles, the issue was that they held on to the ceremonial law they held on to the practice of the law as their mean of salvation. And instead, they did not trust in what Jesus did for them. So as a result, Paul tells them that they are for they stumble at the stumbling block. So, and this is happening even today. So many Christians fall in this thing. The law of God was not given for the purpose of saving you, but rather to show you how you have sinned and are in need of a savior. That is the purpose of the law. Some wants to get rid of the law altogether, but we can't do that. But someone trying to, some try to use the law as a way to get saved. You can't do that either, right? So the law has a purpose. The purpose is to help you to see your need for salvation, to point you to Jesus so that you can go and receive righteousness by faith, right? That is the law. But the law is not an issue, though. The problem is God wants us to obey the law once we receive Christ's righteousness. But you cannot use the law as a mean of salvation and reject the righteousness of Christ. That is not how it's supposed to be done. Verse 11, since I am not saved by keeping the law, do I still need to obey the law? I just answered that question, but for the sake of going along with the Bible study, how about we get to that? Romans 6, 15 and 16. Romans 6, <clears throat> 15 and 16. Are you ready for this? I'm getting a little tired, guys. I'm recording this actually at 1 a.m. in the morning. What then shall we send? Con shall we send? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid, know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servant to obey him, servant you are whom you obey, whether of sin unto death, or obedience unto righteousness. So, what does we said? God forbid. So, in other words, do I get rid of the law because I cannot be saved by the law? The answer Paul says is God forbids that. Like, we have no reason to ever assume because I am saved by the grace of God, for, by the grace of Christ, 
Therefore, I can get rid of the Ten Commandments. Big mistake. That's not Bible either. All right. So the answer is God forbid. In other words, don't do it. Don't do it. God is not asking you to get rid of the law. He's just telling you don't use the law as a mean of salvation. But obedience to the law of God is perfectly fine. The Savior's righteousness is never given to be a license to sin. It is extended so that God's law can be established in the heart of the believer. Did you get it? So we did not have the ability to obey the law of God in our own strength. Uh, Romans uh, chapter 8 tells us that there is now therefore, about verses 1 and 2, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of Christ Jesus set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin and condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now look at this now. God sent the law through Jesus by his grace so that righteousness could be wrought in me. So I'm missing something to obey the law of God, right? I no longer have the strength, the ability, the power, the knowledge, the wisdom to do it. God gave Jesus as a gift and the life of Jesus is the grace of God. So when I accept Jesus, in his saving grace, God now, through the grace of Christ, works in me and empowers me with his Holy Spirit and by the power of his grace to obey the law of God. It's a beautiful concept. So God is doing for men what they cannot do for themselves. God is working in me both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. God is saving me and making me to be more like Jesus according to his saving grace. I don't have my own righteousness, but I can accept God's righteousness, which is not of the law, but the righteousness of Christ by faith. So I can accept this awesome gift and that gift will work a work of sanctification in me to make me the kind of person that God wants me to be. Simple as that. Let's continue. Question number 12. I don't know why this stuff just goes away like that. What should be my relationship to the law? James 1.25, whosoever looketh into the law of liberty and continue if not therein is being forgetful error, but a doer of the work. So does God want, us, want me to get rid of the law? The answer is no. What is it going to do? Obey, doer, doer of the law, doer. Of the work this man shall be blessed in his day so god want me to actually do james 125 let me look at that quickly just so i am sure but i'm i'm already i want to be made sure okay let's do that yep doer of the work so i was correct so god wants us to be a doer of the work of the law once we are saved. You get it? What if I sin after I have received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior? First John 2 verse 1, My little children, this thing I write unto you that you sin not, but if any man sin, we have an advocate. We spoke about this before. So God doesn't want us to keep living in sin, but if we happen to commit sin, which does happen to the Christian man. Okay, it happens. We do wrong, even as believers. So when that does happen, we are told that there is an advocate, there is a lawyer, there is a high priest who represents you so that you can rise above. Let's continue. You may fall into sin, but you have an advocate in heaven. Jesus Christ is serving he is serving as your high priest, pleading your case as long as you, in sincere repentance, turn to him. Your responsibility is to keep getting up each time you fall. So friends, you're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. You don't have to fall. God can keep us from falling. But the thing is, unfortunately, we make decisions and we stumble. And sometimes, you know, 
the devil has a way of tripping us. Okay, that happens. So when that does happen, what do you do? Don't stay down. Get back up. Keep on wrestling. Keep on fighting. Keep on going with Jesus because you are on the right journey. So it gets difficult at times. Uh, it gets challenging at times. Temptation will come your way. Trials will knock at your door. Uh, but no matter what's happening in your world, keep in mind that the grace of God is more powerful than the temptation of Satan. So I have many sins. Can Jesus still save me? The answer is yes, he can. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Where sin abounded, grace, grace did much more abound. So the more sin that there is in a life, the more grace is given to the man by God. That's the point. No matter how sinful your life may be, if you allow it, God's grace will much more abound because you need it more. You can't outsend God's grace. Can I say amen to that? You cannot outsend God's grace. Jesus said that all sin can be forgiven. Matthew 12, 31. What has Christ, the heavenly high priest, promised if I confess my sins? 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive. Forgive. What does he want to do with our sins? He wants to forgive. What is that it? No. He also wants to do something else. It's called cleanse, where you get the word purify or make you holy. Cleanse you from how many some righteousness no all unrighteousness so god want me to be forgiven he wants me to be cleansed from all of my unrighteousness beautiful beautiful last but not least how do i receive the gift of righteousness are you ready for this we are done access by faith into this grace so it is by faith into the grace of christ i receive this gifts. romans 5 verse 2 Children of God, by faith, you cannot earn salvation. You are given salvation as a gift, like you're given gifts for your birthday, right? You don't say, where did you buy the gift from? How much did you pay for it? Where is the receipt? No, you don't worry about that. You say, thank you, Jesus. And you just go on with what God has done for you. Simple as that. Okay. So God is offering you the gifts of salvation. And your job is to just say, Thank you, Lord. Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. So God wants to dwell in your heart through the word, of course, by faith in his word and by his spirit. And next one is righteousness by faith. So you are righteous by faith, justified by faith, sanctified by faith, walks and lives by faith. So what is the, the word here that keeps on popping back up in the text? Faith, 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 faith. Friends, I have a whole study on how to increase our faith in God in this series. Make sure you go check it out. Faith is essential in order for you to remain, to become a Christian and also to remain a Christian. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So let me ask you a final question because we are done. Have you accepted Jesus robes of righteousness as a covering for your filthy rags? Have you accepted that? robe of righteousness type below yes i do so we are pretty much done i want to know how much of you are listening to the message all the way through comment below by saying lord give me your righteousness comment below lord give me your righteousness let's put the devil on blast let's make a declaration to heaven let's make a declaration in the chat room right now in the comments and say lord give me your righteousness amen how about we pause and have a word of prayer and i'll tell you what the next lesson will be um there are several i know we spoke about victory over sin i have one right now about yeah more immorality so we're gonna see, i'm gonna see you next saturday so you're watching this on a sunday morning i'm gonna see you saturday coming up where we'll be talking about morality yeah morality or immorality oh we gotta talk about that oh our culture has done their mind i lost their mind but guess what there is a word from the lord for you today so how about we pause now and have a word of prayer and bring this video this study to a close heavenly father thank you so much for your word today 
Lord, give me your righteousness. Put on the robe of righteousness on us and teach us how to keep on the robe of righteousness. Bless those who are listening today, Father. Just keep them in your loving care. Watch over them tonight, Father. This morning, I pray that they experience your love in a much personal and honest and real way. Forgive them, Father, for any sin they've committed against you and help them to put on the robe of righteousness right now and to lay aside all bitterness, wrath, and evil speaking, backbiting, any sin which do have easily beset them. I'm asking for you today to give them the victory in the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, thank you so very much. It is 40 minutes in. We are done with this study, and my goal is to keep them at 40 minutes. So this one, I'm hoping it was good and decent. Let me know. Did you enjoy today's study? I'm a little tired. That's why I sound a little slow. It's been a long day, but I wanted to make sure one o'clock in the morning I'm recording this, and I have to work on a thumbnail afterward to make sure you get your substance in a, in a sun, early Sunday morning. That the Lord blesses your heart as I try to do this faithfully. So forgive me for my fatigue looking because I like energy. I've been running around all day yesterday. So I'm ready for bed. But I wanted to make sure that the word of the Lord visits you tonight. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Comment below, share your thoughts with me. And if you happen to have any question, just send me an email concerning these subjects and make sure you print out the Bible study, please. And check up on me, read those verses and mark your studies and save them in a folder because you might need to give somebody Bible study in the future. You never know. So until next time, and as always, remember to look unto Jesus to live by faith. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.